Sage with Sage Survival, and um, I was going to make a video on wild edibles for backyard survival. And I have a little oasis in the woods that I like to go to that has a, a good abundance of them. But I happened to actually stumble across one right here in the vicinity that I'm in right now, on my way there, and I couldn't pass up the opportunity. So I'm going to, you know, pause the film real quick, get out my tools, and then uh, switch the camera angle, and we're going to. Uh, See what wild edible I found. All right, stay tuned. Sage survival. Welcome back, YouTube. All right, now the wild edible that I had found looks just like grass. Well, it's going to appear like grass, but the stalks of this grass are actually hollow and round. And the deeper you get down to the bottom, they stay hollow and round. Now, trying to identify this, they, it's a, a dark green color and it sticks out amongst everything else. So when I find it, and I'm questioning if it is actually what I think it is, and we're going to get to that, I take part of the greenery, crush it up in my hands, and I give it a smell. This smells like chives. Now, there's only one thing I can think of that smells like chives, and that would be onions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my knife, dig right down in here, see if I can loosen up some of this dirt. Let's get this bad boy, pull it out, and what you have there, YouTube, is what they call a wild onion. Smells just like it, tastes just like it, and it's awesome for cooking. You can eat them right out the ground, just give them a rinse, and uh, pop them right in your mouth. Now what I'm going to do is dig a few of these up, and I'm going to carry them with me to the next spot, and then we're going to go from there. Alright? So y'all stay tuned. Sage Survival. Welcome back, YouTube. So, what we have right here, as you can see, is something you're going to find in your yard. Yeah, definitely in your backyard. And I probably don't even have to tell you what kind of flower this is, but I'm going to do it just because it's educational. This is a dandelion. A dandelion is edible from head to toe, just like the wild onion is. As you can see, it has a very bright yellow flower on top. And the leaves are elongated and they curl up a slight bit. And the reason why they do that is so rainwater will run down and feed the plant the best way it knows how. So it's adapted to that. Now, the flower, the stem, the leaves, and the root are all edible. So what I'm going to do is dig a few of these up and bring them with me, and we'll uh, see what else we can find. All right, stay tuned. Sage Survival. Welcome back, YouTube. All right, this might be hard to see with the light on the actual plant itself, but we're going to see what we can do. This, my friends, is called garlic mustard. All right, it has a white flower on the top, elongated stem, and the flowers grow, or not the flowers, the leaves grow sporadic all the way down, spread out. So as you can see, they are what appears to be like a, a sh a heart shaped but they have these little ridges on the side easily identifiable and the easiest way to identify it if you think it is but not quite sure just like with the uh, the chives of the wild onion you take it crush it up in your hand get the juices flowing and give it a smell it should smell like a strong garlic smell with a bite and that bite would be the mustard so when gathering wild edibles, you never want to strip a plant completely bare of its leaves or whatever it is that you're using. And the reason why is because that plant would die, and if everybody did that, we'd have no more of the plants, and then you'd have no more wild edibles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snag a couple of leaves off of each one. All right, YouTube. So I've collected three items, three very commonly found plants in the springtime in Connecticut. One, the dandelion, very common. You could find that anywhere. Two, the wild onions, which can be found in your backyard. I've uh, 
picked a couple out myself. It's just not as many as these, but they could still be found. And three, the garlic mustard plant. Now, all three of these do not have to be boiled. They can be eaten raw. Um, the dandelions will be a little bitter because it has a, um, uh, like a, a white sappy uh, fluid that goes inside that causes bitterness, which um, on a side note, uh, a majority of plants that do secrete like a, a white milky substance like that, you don't want to eat at all. Uh, they're normally bad for you as far as poisonous or will cause you to have an upset stomach, something to that extent. Dandelion is one of the uh, few exceptions. But let's go ahead and see how these bad boys taste. This would be the garlic mustard. It's actually got a very robust flavor. If I was to get something in the snare out here, a squirrel or rabbit, I would definitely skin it and shove a bunch of these in the inside chest cavity when I cook it over the fire. And uh, I guarantee you, it'd have a good taste. Now, I'm gonna move on to the, the onions right here. And get some of this dirt and stuff off. Get rid of the roots. I'm not sure if the actual root root that holds it to the ground is edible or not, but uh, I normally cut them off on onions that I buy at the store, so I'm not gonna make an exception here. So let me get that skin off real quick. And wild onion. Now, wild onions. These things are good, very sweet. Now where I come from in Texas, we have sweet onions that grow and it's because of the ground. So I can only assume that something that's getting from the dirt here is what causes it to be sweet. Let's get another one of those bad boys. That was good. I just hope I don't run into anybody I know on the way home. I have to say hi to them. I have some uh, garlic mustard and onion breath. I'm sure that would uh, definitely make me lose a friend or two. Wild onion number two. Now, we're gonna move on to the uh, to the dandelion. And I'm only gonna eat the flower and the leaves of these dandelions. The roots, uh, you wanna boil them down. They make a good supplement for coffee. Um, but obviously, if you can see, they're like really, really dirty and I couldn't even scrape that off without having to like really wash it and all that good stuff. So I'm not even gonna sweat it none. Um, now if I was gonna boil them down out here, then I would definitely go ahead and put the effort into it. But me just telling you is good enough. So there's flour. Now, the flour's not bitter, not at the least. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I might have a different taste than you, but I, uh, the flower I definitely like. It's almost sweet, so I'm guessing it would be the, um, the nectar in it or whatever attracts the bees. And it's the leaf. Very good. So, I'm glad y'all watched. I hope that was educational for you. Just remember, folks, please positively, positively, I can't even speak right now. Please identify everything and make it a positive identification. Go buy some manuals, look it up on the internet. Don't just start grabbing random stuff and shoving it in your mouth because uh, I guarantee you, you're gonna grab the wrong thing and you're gonna end up sicker than a dog. So just uh, be careful out there, you know, do some research and uh, you know, go see what you can find. I'm telling you, everything's in your backyard. Everything you need to survive. All right, this is Russell Sage with Sage Survival. Y'all be good now, YouTube.